Now don't be nervous, Jeannie. Okay. It's about food, I'll be fine. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Ray. Some of you might know me as Tiki with Ray, and today I'm with my friend Jeannie again. We are on your porch, and normally when we're talking about a Tiki experience, a lot of times it comes down to the drinks. You got drinks that are lit on fire, you know, there's little dances and chants being done. But something that kind of gets overlooked is the food. And it's not something I never even thought about until you brought this up, and you're like, yeah, that's right. Because you get to play with your food as an adult. Yes. So let's talk about that. So, um, you know, normally when you go to a tiki party or a function or things like that, you've got the ubiquitous cheese tray, crudite plate from Costco or whatever, and, and that. And, Boring. And part of the thing that made the tiki movement the thing was yeah. you got to play with your food, and the food was exotic. Yeah. So exotic food was actually Cantonese in a new wrapper to begin with. It, uh, that's exactly what Don Beach did. He was the first one to have a kitchen in that. So he um, he hired a the best Cantonese cook in town and dudded him out, put a new label on Cantonese food, even had his wife walk people through their spotless Chinese kitchen. And it was the thing. And um, it was so, such a swank place to be that in 1947, when Orson Welles dared to take off his dinner jacket and put it over his chair, he was told in no uncertain terms by the maitre d', Mr. Welles, you will put your jacket back on and we don't care how hot and stuffy it is. And so he was told by Mr. No, wait, let me, is, this, is this what Orson Welles said? No, Orson Welles said, well, I won't be back. You know I won't be back. He was back next week. I thought he was going to say, yeah. I will sell no wine before it's time. No, no. no. That's too early? No, nope. I think I, I have I have it in one of the tomes here. What is, that? what is that book? This one is Beach Bum Berry's Taboo Table, which a lot of people don't have anymore. So, what's, so this is all about food? Yes. Oh, wow. So this is um, tying your drinks and food with a grateful acknowledgement to Mrs. Bum here in the front. But um, Jeff Berry put this one, and his and that story is in there. So it said, Wells put his coat back on again. Wells announced that it was the last time he would ever be in such a stuffy place. Is that your best Orson Wells impression? Something like that. It was the last time, remember Bach told, for a whole week. You see, we were going with this, Wells, the infamous gourmand, as well as enfant terrible wasn't drinking in the bar he was eating in the dining room so exotic cool fun to play with so you get toys like this hibachi and when you're having a, a nibbles thing you can put out skewered meat and all sorts of things and there are fun things to put out like staked and tied things that have funny names yeah. little placards to tell your guests what you're eating but it's more fun to play with your food yeah so these hibachis came out and it was also one of our gateway drugs into tiki there was a restaurant here in seattle called the luau yeah and right down the street from where we're at yeah and so when they brought your poo poo platter to the table no matter what was on it, it had a flaming hibachi going in the middle. Mm. And there's a couple different ways to do hibachis. One is like we have it right now with actual charcoal going in it, which is going to warm up whatever you're putting on it and continue cooking it. Yeah. The other is flame sterno, which is the gel. You don't want the liquid, you want the gel. And you spoon it out into the bottom of their hibachi and light it up and it'll give you about, oh, say five to ten minutes of fun for each load. Yeah. And um, but it gives kind of a, a slightly chemically taste, you know, because mm. sterno is sterno. Yep. Um, but it gives you flame, and there are other ways to get flame, which we can probably go into later. But it lets you play with your food. There are two mistakes that are always made with hibachi. What's that? Always pre-cook your meat. Oh. And the other is don't overcook your meat. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so they go hand in hand. Um, you want to pre-cook your meat, especially if you're serving pork or chicken, yeah. so that you don't serve salmonella. So this is a pork skewer that I have in front of you. And so I it's already cooked. Yes. And it, what is essentially is sort of like reheating it up sort of? Yes, or? it's heating it up and playing with it. And with the sterno in it, you get the flash of the fire coming yep. up too. Um, and if you get, want to get really fancy, you can do a fruit appetizer and you can do the cinnamon trick with your hibachi. Oh, really? Well, you just... Yeah. Now, what about, if you're going to do a skewer, what about mixing the meat with vegetables? You don't really want to mix your meat and vegetables. They cook at different temperatures yeah. and they cook for different lengths of time. And so what happens is your meat is undercooked and it then gives your vegetables salmonella or you've overcooked your vegetables and they fall off the skewer and they get down somebody's dress i'm gonna be i'm gonna be no i'm gonna be hearing that like when i'm gonna be driving around work tomorrow <laughs> salmonella yes so that's just something like botulism you just don't want to have no no i don't want to have botulism or salmonella we're talking about a polynesian restaurant mm -hmm. and essentially what you're saying is a lot of this food is borrowed from cantonese food Essentially yes. Chinese food. Yes. Why Why wasn't it just food from Hawaii, which is more like kalua pork and stuff like that? So think back to the 1950s. Yeah, I remember that time. Okay. And what was exotic? What was exotic back then? Yeah. You put pineapple on your hamburger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it was a Hawaiian burger. Um, they wanted something easily cookable, easily accessible. People already accepted the idea of Chinese food. Oh, okay. Easy to get the equipment, easy to change the names on everything. And then as they got more schmancy, then we go into Trader Vic, who was more schmancy, Trader Vic made international food the thing. So he would bring in stuff from the Philippines. So what you're Malaysia. saying, Jeannie, is that people, People were up for ex having exotic food, but not too exotic. Yes. Or not, not that foreign. Not ready for anything that okay. wasn't already in their palate. And at that time, Chinese restaurants have been around for some time, so people kind of know what it is. And it kind of goes with the, the tropical drinks, so the, the food didn't compete with the drinks. Very well, but, but didn't the customers back then, didn't they, I mean, they, they're like, didn't they say like this is Chinese food, or they care? Or I don't think they really cared to begin with, and but okay. then they wanted more of an experience later, and that's where you get toys at the table, and you get so like in this case, you know, you have your basic Hawaiian bun. Yeah. You heat up your skewer again. You pull it off into your bun. Yep. And and you're done. There's a lot of other things that you can do with this setup. You can do sukiyaki you can do um you can there's there's other types of hibachis um yakitori grills all of these things are available on amazon or ebay yeah you just click it in and you say yakitori you say rumaki and boom it'll give you the equipment you want but this is a, called a little pot hibachi and they sell on uh, i found this one on amazon wow. and they have these fun little trays that turn around and around and you can put stuff in them. And um, when we were introduced to it at the Luau, each one of these pockets had a different poo-poo in it. So there was, oh. um, you could put your um, pot sticker, they had it on a stick so that you could drop it on there. They had um, anything you could stick on a skewer. Wow. So um, they had like little vegetable skewers, other stuff like that. And it became part of the play of the poo-poo. Let me ask you something. Um, so did actually Hawaiian, Hawaii, did they eventually adopt all this themselves? I think, well, when Vix and Canlis and you know? those guys opened up there, because like there's some recipes inside the taboo table. And one of them is from Canlis's um, Hawaiian location. Okay. Um, yes, because it was theater and it was fun. And one of the best selling appetizers at Trader Vic's is the Cho Cho beef. Yep. And you play with it on a hibachi at your table, and everybody orders it. And it's awesome. And, it's and very this would tasty. have been in Hawaii. And uh, even though it wasn't from Hawaii, it was more. Asian. Yeah. The luau menu, they did luau's. And um, 
Don Beach did luau and that, but those were set out as big dinners where they brought out the pig after it was cooked in an umo. Yeah. So this is more your table side dinner type service at your standard tiki joint. And like Afong is a really good example. Yeah. It was a Chinese restaurant. They went, hey, this tiki thing. It's, it's good for business. We'll just go out and get a million tiki torches. We'll plant them all through the bar. Serve some, add a sheet to the back of the menu with all the tropical drinks and we'll serve our regular menu. It'll be awesome. And they made out like bandits. Yeah, no, and I, I, I tell you, I'm serious. Like I'm from the East Coast and over in New Jersey, there's not one but three Chinese tiki bars. Mm -hmm. And um, they're great. And, and you're right. Essentially, you take out some of the like take out some of the tiki's, and now you just got a Chinese restaurant. You put them in. You put some tiki torches. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I remember like forever going to any Chinese restaurants. They always had a drink menu, mm -hmm. and I remember always seeing like a Singapore sling. There's a mai tai in there somewhere. There was a zombie. Now, how true they were to the original, I don't know. But point is, those were the first places that I remember seeing tropical drinks yep and like one of the big things you put on a hibachi rumaki yeah. um it was a a don the beach wonder he hated wasting anything and his chicken supplier forced him to buy whole birds that included wow. all the stuff inside him and throwing out all those chicken livers really bothered him so he rammed them on a skewer with um, a water chestnut and bacon and put his finger down a book of Cook Cook Island terms, vroom, hit yeah. Rumaki and bam, that appetizer was born. So Rumaki was the big John the Beach one yep. and Chocho Beef was the big one for Vicks. Wow. And um, we can include those recipes if people want to try them because you actually have to hunt for the one for Chocho Beef and it's in restaurant proportions, but I have it so we can put it in there. And then for, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with a hibachi beside just the little skewers. And this is a fantastic old book. It's still available. You can get it, you know, when you're just hunting in ABE books or that sort of thing. Yeah. And the Honorable Hibachi, and as you can see, I have many markings because there's a lot of really good stuff in here. Yeah. And they, there's everything from desserts to appetizers. There's full entrees in here that you just enjoy with your friends. And see, they have the little teeny hibachi just waiting for it to happen. So um, there's, and then the, with the rebirth of the tiki movement, we've just begun to now get tiki food showing up. So thank you, Tiki Lindy. Oh, yeah. She was a tiki con. She was, and she gave a really great lecture. Um, most of what I got to hear, because I was, of course, dashing to room parties and helping set things up, was when she was talking about upping your uh, garnish game. But she has a really great book here with a lot of boo-boos and other things. And it's set um, as kind of a field guide, which is really fun. So you get to go on a trip as you go through the book. So good job, Tiki Lindy. That was awesome. Um, so... When you do a tiki recipe, for example, many people have dietary restrictions. Yep. So you can play to that as you do your marinades and stuff. So the three different uh, meat sticks we have to try yep. are a very traditional Hawaiian one. This is a Hawaiian recipe that you would find at uh, any luau. This okay. is huli huli chicken. Right. So it's ginger and soy and it comes- Is in that a, what this is? Is that the pork? Um, that one's the pork one. So this one's huli huli chicken, and it's a very Asian flavored. So can I try one? Yeah. So finally. Yeah, I know I've been teasing you. So that one's huli huli chicken. The beef is out of the Honorable Hibachi book. Mmm, that's good. That yummy. Huli huli chicken. Huli huli chicken, super easy. You just get a bunch of. You can even get the pre-sliced for stir fry chicken meat. When you thread the skewers, this is important. You want to thread them like little S's, and you want them oh, yeah. to be about the same width all the way around, or you will have undercooked and overcooked meat, and nobody wants that, because they'll get... Salmonella. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of this. Or in pork, in case of pork, trichinosis. Thank you. So, the um, beef is skewered beef strips with fruit and rum, and that one came out of the hibachi recipe book. <laughs> okay. And it's um, 
guava jelly or lily koi jelly. I like lily koi myself, so I put that in. Mm -hmm. um, orange juice, lime juice, a little bit of grated lime zest, gingered powder, um, and light rum of your choice, and melted butter. Every single one of the ones that are, is a marinade, you need to have a fat in it to help transfer the flavor. So you need an acid and you need a fat. The acid goes into the fiber of the meat and softens it up and infuses the flavor. The fat is the carrier that keeps everything um, moist as it's cooking. Okay. Okay? So that one is skewered beef strips with fruit and rum. Oh, so I go ahead and cry one of these? Yes, and the rum on that one is... Um, rum. Light rum. But you want a light rum because a dark rum will overpower it. Um, I can taste it. It's so good. They're they're pretty nifty. I like that one. And then mm. the pork is a genie special. What makes it the genie special? So the genie special is genie really really that's this, right? likes really really likes old Asian restaurants. I grew up every Friday in one called the Chung Mi. It was up on 45th Street, and I've been very unhappy ever since it closed when I was a teenager. So right. every Friday night, I was at the Chung Mi. And the flavors that I remember happening out of that kitchen when it would come for pork were white pepper, Chinese mustard, um, a little bit of rice vinegar, and um, and it, they just it all just kind of mushed together. And you could... It's kind of the flavor of the char sweet pork that they make with, yeah. the, uh, with the pink edge. Um, but this is just starting with regular pork. So it's those components all put together, put on a skewer, and ready to go. So it's ready. Yep. Mmm. That is so, so good. I'll be giving out my recipe for the photograph at the end so awesome that if you wanted to try it there you could I appreciate so, but you. please let me eat this stuff play with your food play with your food yeah uh, it, it's it's not as much fun if you don't play with your food because yeah, I never gonna, I never talk with your mouth full yeah if, if you're you if you're gonna have fun with your drinks you should have fun with your food I agree I agree well let's have some more fun with our food and let's start actually eating this stuff awesome all right Aloha mahalo and all the other crap Eat up and clean your plate. So you don't get trichinosis or salmonella. Go. <laughs> <laughs>
Hi everyone, this is Ray. <laughs> no, no, he's like tiptoeing through the thing. <laughs> All right. Hey gang, this is Tiki with Ray, and I just want to say thank you very much for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more episodes, click on the subscribe button. And if you like the video, give it a like. That would mean a lot to me. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment in the, uh, the comment section below.